Hello, everybody. Welcome to this year's Poetry Out Loud competition, virtually, of course. My name is Marcelo Hernandez Castillo, and I am the Yuba Sutter Poet Laureate. Um, I am thrilled to welcome you to uh, this year's competition. I have emceed in the past, and I have been part of it um, in the past, and it's really a special opportunity to be able to be part of it again this year. Um, with a new batch of students, a uh, new batch of poems, and um, just another year of, uh, of some great poetry all around. Um, I'm going to uh, just talk a little bit about myself and then talk a little bit about poetry and turn it over to our hosts um, and, of course, the students, of course, all of you who are ready to recite. Um, so I have been the Poet Laureate of Yuba Sutter area. Uh, for one year and some change. Um, I am a poet in my own right. I have three books of poems. Uh, my first one, one was a winner of the Apulian Junior Prize from uh, Boa Editions out of Rochester. And um, I have a book out from Northwestern University Press, Dulce. And then my latest book is a memoir called Children of the Land from HarperCollins publishers. Um, a little bit about me other than that, I'm a teacher. I teach at the St. Mary's College um, MFA program in creative writing, and I teach in their poetry track and their creative nonfiction track. Um, so that's what's keeping me busy. Uh, other professional duties, I'm an editor uh, and also a cultural ambassador for the Art for Just Justice program from the University of Arizona where we work to create narratives around mass incarceration to um, bring awareness to uh, some of the issues around mass incarceration. This year, I'm really excited to be working with the Academy of American Poets out of New York to edit the Poem A Day series. Um, it's a really popular series where every day you get a new poem um, and so this, this year I am the October uh, editor. I'm really excited to do that. Uh, you should check out their newsletter. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to hear all of the poems being recited because recitation is something that um, I know I could work better on. Um, there's only one poem that I have uh, recited, that I have memorized by heart. Um, and that poem has always been kind of in the background. Uh, it talks about the California coast. And I went camping the other day and I went to uh, Big Sur down um, in the central coast. And out of nowhere, I just started reciting this poem. It just kind of felt right. It felt, um, it felt like the right thing to do and it just kind of grew out of me. Um, you know, poetry lives inside of us uh, and it can help us. It can help us grow. It can help us learn. It can help us deal with things, um, especially when it is already inside you, when it's living inside you and you don't have to go to a library to get it, go to your bookshelf to look for one. Um, and so I'm excited to be a part of this, um, you know, being being that I'm a poet full time, like that's what I do. Yes, I teach, um, but mostly I'm an author. I'm a I'm a I'm a writer. It it's really it's really valuable to think of the work that artists do, the work that artists here at the Regional Arts Council do, all of the work that the Regional Arts Council does um, to promote the arts, because um, you know it's it's something that isn't as funded as well-funded as, say, athletics isn't as well-funded as, say, the, um, you know, like the national, uh, uh, the science portion of the NEA or the NIH. Um, but it's very important for us to know just how, how um, you know what, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, I'm here at my house, of course, through Zoom, and I'm teaching online. It's been a very difficult going on three years now. I had to cancel all of my book tour for my memoir. You know, I was scheduled to go to Australia, Madrid, 
all over the U.S. and I had to cancel all of that. So it's it's sad, but through all of this, um, there's been a way that I've been able to communicate with people through my poems. Um, people have reached out. Some people, somebody just said that they uh, proposed with one of my poems. I got somebody uh, who tattooed one of my poems on themselves, which is weird. I've never had that happen before. But basically, I'm just here to promote and get people revved up about something that is very much uh, a thing. It isn't some, you know, poetry isn't something that just was done 200 years ago and it's very um, esoteric. You know, poets are writing about things happening right now, things that are important to our cultural consciousness and to see the world through poetry, just as some of us would see the world through math, would see the world through business, would see the world through um, painting, um, you know, more and more language is very important um, in our hyper uh, image based modes of communication, you know, aka social media. Um, we're finding that there's different modes of expression that are more condensed, more to the point, and a lot gets lost in that. Don't don't get me wrong. I love social media. It's an um, equalizing factor that was never was never possible before. Um, but you know, language matters, and more and more, we're seeing just how important language is to the nuances of our daily experiences. Um, so, I guess. I'm not sure if I said anything important, anything to uh, warrant inspiration or anything like that. I just wanted to maybe put it on, put poetry on the level of like the mundane, not the mundane, but the everyday, you know, that there are poets everywhere you turn, that we don't have to be teaching at an Ivy League college, that, you know, they're not hidden somewhere up at the cabins writing. No, um, we have day jobs uh, and we have families, we have friends, we have lives outside. And, you know, this could be a life that you lead either exclusively or, you know, as part of, as just one part of the many selves that, that make up who you are. Um, you know, the relevance of poetry in our younger generations, I think it has the power to create something special um, with, with just so much creativity happening on, on platforms like TikTok. Um, it's, it, it, it's wildly imaginative just what the possibilities are. And so, for me, the first time that I saw a working poet was not until I was in my 20s. I was like, oh, you can do this. This is something that you can do. Um, yes, I had to go to school for it. Yes, I got my master's. Um, and yes, I'm teaching to supplement it. But, you know, I live, breathe every day some version of poem, some version of poetry. It doesn't have to be something that I give up my life for. You know, I can be washing the dishes and be reciting a poem. I can be driving and be reciting a poem. Um, so it's, I hope that you all take this opportunity as more than say extra credit. Um, I know a lot of you are doing this because you genuinely like language, because you like how language feels, how it, um, how you can maneuver and how you can create things that perhaps weren't imaginable before. Um, and I guess that's my only hope is to convey the idea that poetry can be done by anyone and everywhere at any time. It doesn't have to be something you write with a gold dip fountain pen. It doesn't have to be something that you um, have to buy thin onion skin pages to write on. You know, if it's something on a napkin that you suddenly thought about while you were at dinner, that's poetry. Um, you know, if it's this phrase that you know, you don't know why it's coming to you, but you just keep repeating it, that's poetry. So I hope you continue. I hope you continue to just memorize poems, read poems, and know that uh, it's in the poets, the poets who are the ones who 
carry the cultural consciousness, carry cultural memory, and pass down some of the stories of our families and of the things around us. So I want to thank everybody again for participating. Um, good luck to all of the uh, participants, and um, thank you all for being here. I look forward to hearing everybody read. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Marcelo. We really appreciate you taking the time to do our keynote. So before we get started with the competition, I just first wanted to introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Shantea Arroyo. I am the Arts and Education Coordinator with Yuba Sutter Arts and Culture, and I actually coordinated Poetry Out Loud. Uh, so just a brief explanation of what Poetry Out Loud is for those of you who may not know. Uh, poetry Out Loud is a poetry recitation and memorization competition. So what that means is the students who have participated actually memorized and then recited their poem in video submission and turned it in. Uh, so Poetry Out Loud gives students the option to really engage with literature in a new level while also gaining some public speaking skills as well as building some confidence in um, Poetry Out Loud has had a, a long-standing tradition of really helping students, high school students, uh, enjoy the arts, literary arts in a new way. Uh, and so a little bit more about how the competition will work as well. So first up, we're gonna have the Yuba County students who are gonna be uh, judged first, and then I will be announcing winners. Um, and then we will have Sutter County students come on and we will view their submissions all together. And then I will announce winners for them as well. So it's going to be two separate sections. At the end of it all, we will end up with the top three for both counties, and our first place champions will be moving on to the state finals in Sacramento. So I will see you all in just a brief second. Thank you so much. After the Winter by Claude McKay. Someday when trees have shed their leaves, and against the morning's white, the shivering bird beneath the eaves has sheltered for the night. We'll turn our faces southward, left toward the summer isle, where bamboos by the shepherd grove and wide mouthed orchids smile. And we will seek the quiet hill where towers the con and tree, and leap the laughing crystal rill and works the joining bee. And we will build our cottage there beside an open glade with black, red, blue bells blowing near and ferns that never fade. Becoming a Redwood by Dana Joya. Stand in a field long enough and the sounds start up again. The crickets, the invisible toad who claims that change is possible and all the other life too small to name. First one, then another, until innumerable, they merge into the single voice of a summer hill. Yes, it's hard to stand still, hour after hour, fixed as a fence post, hearing the steers snort in the dark pasture, smelling the manure, and paralyzed by the mystery of how a stone can bear to be a stone, the pain the grass endures, breaking through the earth's crust. Unimaginable, the redwoods on the far hill, rooted for centuries, the living wood grown tall and thickened with a hundred thousand days of light. The old windmill creaks in perfect time to the wind shaking the miles of pasture grass. And the last farmhouse light goes off. Something moves nearby, coyotes hunt these hills and packs of feral dogs but standing here at night accepts all that. You are your own pale shadow in the quarter moon, moving more slowly than the crippled stars, part of the moonlight as the moonlight falls, part of the grass that answers the wind, part of the midnight's watchfulness that knows there is no silence, but when danger comes. Ars Puerca by Jose Olivares. Migration is derived from the word migrate, which is a verb defined by Merriam-Webster as to move from one country, place, or locality to another. Plot twist, 
Migration never ends. My parents moved from Jalisco, Mexico to Chicago in 1987. They were dislocated from Mexico by capitalism and they arrived in Chicago just in time to be dislocated by capitalism. Question, is migration possible if there is no other land to arrive in? My work to imagine. My family started migrating in 1987 and they never stopped. I was born mid-migration. I made my home in that motion. Let me try again. I tried to become American, but America is toxic. I tried to become Mexican, but Mexico is toxic. My work to do more than reproduce the toxic stories I inherited and learned. In other words, just because it is art doesn't mean it is inherently nonviolent. My work to write poems that make my people feel safe, seen, or otherwise loved. My work to make my enemies feel afraid, angry, or otherwise ignored. My people, my people, my enemies, capitalism. Susan Sontag, victims are interested in the representation of their own sufferings. Remix, survivors are interested in the representation of their own survival. My work, survival. Question, why poems? Answer. Anthem for my belly after eating too much by Kara Jackson. I look in the mirror and all the chips I've eaten this month have accumulated like schoolwork at the bottom of my tummy, my belly, a country I am trying to love. My mouth is a lover devoted to you, my belly, my belly. The birds will string a song together with winds for you and your army of solids, militia of Greece. Americans love excess but we also love jeans and refuse to make excess comfortable in them. I step into my fashionable prison, my middle managed and fastened into suffering. My gracious gut, dutiful dome, I will wear a house for you to live in with walls that embrace your growing flesh and watch you reach towards everything possible. After working for 60 hours again, for what reason? By Bob Hickok. The best job I had was moving a stone from one side of the road to the other. This required a permit, which required a bribe. The bribe took all my salary, Yet, because I hadn't finished the job, I had no salary. And to pay the bribe, I took a job moving the stone the other way. Because the official wanted his bribe, he gave me a permit for the second job. When I pointed out the work would be best completed if I did nothing, he complimented my brain and wrote a letter to my employer suggesting promotion on stationery bearing the wings of a raptor spread in flight over a mountain smaller than the bird. My boss, fearing my intelligence, paid me to sleep on the sofa and take lunch with the official who required a bribe to keep anything from being done. When I told my parents, they wrote my brother come home from university to be slapped on the back of the head dutifully he arrived and bowed to receive his instruction, at which point sense entered his body, and he asked what I could do by way of a job. I pointed out there were stones everywhere trying not to move. All it took was a little gumption to be the man who didn't move them. It was harder to explain the intricacies of not obtaining a permit to not do this. Just yesterday, he got up at dawn and shaved, as if the lack of hair on his face had anything to do with the appearance of food on an empty table. April Love by Ernest Dawson We have walked in love's land a little way. We have learnt his lessons a little while. 
And shall we not part at the end of the day with a sigh, a smile? A little while in the shine of the sun, we were twined together, joined lips, forgot how the shadows fall when the day is done and when love is not. We have made no vows, there were none be broke. Our love was as free as the wind on the hill. There was no word said to be wished and spoke. We're rotten, no ill. So shall we not part at the end of the day? Who have loved and lingered a little while? Join lips for the last time? Go our way with a sigh, a smile? Prince Joseph Bruchet. Seeing photos of ancestors a century past is like looking at your own fingerprints, circles and lines you can't recognize until someone with a stranger's eye looks close and says, that's you. Hi, my name is Bryn Hexberg and I will be reading Anthem for My Belly After Eating Too Much by Kara Jackson. I look in the mirror and all the chips I've eaten this month have accumulated, like schoolwork at the bottom of my tummy, my belly, a country I'm trying to love. My mouth is a lover, devoted to you, my belly, my belly. The birds will string a song together with wind for you and your army of solids, militia of Greece. Americans love excess, but we also love jeans and refuse to make excess comfortable in them. I step into a fashionable prison, my middle managed and fastened into suffering. My gracious gut, dutiful dome, I will wear a house for you that you can live in, promise walls that embrace your growing flesh, and watch you reach toward everything possible. Fantastic job to all of the participants for Yuba County. You all did such a good job. We had a lot of great submissions this year in both counties, and it was a joy to be able to watch them all over again. So before we move on to the, the winners, the top three for Yuba, I first wanted to explain a little bit about judging. So we had three judges that came in and viewed the submissions, and they were judging on a couple of different criteria. Uh, the first was physical presence, how the student was performing, as well as how they were holding themselves, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness in their performance, evidence of understanding within, of the actual poetry itself, and then overall performance. And so you all were judged by three separate judges with their own opinions. Um, and honestly, I think they had a really hard time making decisions here. Uh, so before we move on to the Sutter County participants, let's announce some winners for Yuba County. So we are announcing the top three winners. Uh, third place will be receiving $50. Second place will be receiving 75. And first place will receive the grand prize of $150. So round of applause for all of our participants. Um, and let's get started with the actual announcement. So in third place, we have Anna Galvin. Thank you so much, Anna. It was a joy to be able to have you come back again. Uh, in second place, we have Garrett Granger. Congratulations. And in first place, our Yuba County champion who will be participating in the state final is Salma Alpha Kui. Thank you so much to everyone and biggest congratulations to the top three. And to Salma, we will be in touch. You are not gonna be alone in this. Uh, congratulations on your win. This was a really hard one. You all were neck and neck. So thank you so much. Uh, and so now we are gonna be going ahead and moving on to our Sutter County participants. One Year Old by William Butler Yeats. When you are old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes once had and of their shadows deep. How many loved their moments of glad grace and loved their beauty but loved false or true. But one man loved the pilgrim so anew and loved the sorrows of your changing face and bending down beside the glowing bars murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountain overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. 
Fire and ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if I have to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate. To say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Not waving, but drowning by Stevie Smith. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning. I was much further out than you thought and not waving, but drowning. Poor chap, he always loved larking and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him, his heart gave way. They said, oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always, still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far all my life and not waving, but drowning. What Women Are Made Of by Bianca Lynn Spriggs. There are many kinds of open, Audrey Lord. We are all ventricle, spine, lung, larynx, and gut, clavicle, and nape, what lies forked in an open palm. We are follicle and temple. We are ankle, arch, and soul, pore and rib, pelvis and roots, and tongue. We are wishbone and gland and molar and lobe. We are hippocampus and exposed nerve and cornea. Areola, pigments, melanin and nails. Varicose, cellulite, divining rod. Sinew and tissue, saliva and silt. We are blood and salt, clay and aquifer. We are breath and flame and stratosphere, palimpsest and bibelots and clojon fine lines, marigold, hydrangea and dimple, night light, satellite and stubble. We are pinnacle and plummets, dark circles and dark matter, a constellation of freckles and specters and miracles and lashes. Both bent and erect, we are all give and give back. Make an incision in our nectary, and painted ladies sail forth, riding the back of a warm wind, plumed with love and things like love. Crack us down to the marrow, and you may find us full of cicada husks and sand dollars and salted maple taffy. Reary of welding together our daydreams. All sweet tea, razor blades, carbon, and patchwork quilts of good God and Lord have mercy. Our hands remember how to turn the earth before we do. Our intestinal fortitude, communalimbus, streaked with saffron light. Our foundation, Knots in our limbs or hips. This comes first as an amen, a hallelujah, a suckling swaddled song, sung at the cosmos breast. You want to know what women are made of? Open wide and find out. The Ocean by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The ocean has its silent kiss, deep, quiet, and alone. Though there be fury on the waves beneath them, there is none. The awful spirits of the deep hold their communion there, and there are those for whom we weep, the young, the bright, the fair. Calmly, the weird seamen rest beneath their own blue sea. The ocean solitudes are blessed, for there is purity. The earth has good, the earth has care, 
and quiet are its graves, but peaceful sleep is ever there beneath the dark blue waves. Since there is no escape by Sarah Teasdale. Since there is no escape, since at the end my body will be utterly destroyed. This hand I love as I have loved a friend. This body I tended, wept with, and enjoyed. Since there is no escape, even for me, who love life with the love too sharp to bear, the scent of orchards in the rain, the sea, and hours alone, too still and sure for prayer. Since darkness waits for me, then all the more let me go down as waves sweep to the shore in pride, and let me sing with my last breath. In these few hours of light, I lift my head. Life is my lover, I shall leave the dead. If there is any way to baffle death. Hi, my name is Erin Lacuna, and I will be reciting Enough by Susan Buffum. I am wearing dark glasses inside the house to match my dark mood. I have left all the sugar out of the pie. My rage is a kind of domestic rage. I learned it from my mother, who learned it from her mother before her, and so on. Surely the Greeks had a word for this. Naturally, the Germans do. The more words a person knows to describe her private sufferings, the more distantly she can perceive them. I list the names of all the cities I've known and watch an ant drag its crooked shadow home. What does it mean to love the life we've been given? To act well, the role that's been cast for us? Wind, light, fire, time. A train whistles in the far hills. One day, you'll plan to be riding it. Thank you. The Properly Scholarly Attitude by Adelaide Craigsey. The poet pursues his beautiful theme. The preacher his golden beatitude. And I run after a vanishing dream, the glittering will of the wispish gleam of the properly scholarly attitude. The highly desirable, very advisable, hardly acquirable, properly scholarly attitude. I envy the savage without any clothes who lives in a tropical latitude. It's little of general culture he knows, but then he escapes the worrisome woes of the properly scholarly attitude. The unceasingly sighed over, wept over, cried over, futilely died over a properly scholarly attitude. I work and I work till I nearly am dead. I could say what the watchman said that I could, but still with a sigh and a shake of the head, you don't understand, it is ruthlessly said, the properly scholarly attitude, the eye to be sought for, wrought for and fought for, the nigh to be caught for, a properly scholarly attitude. I really am sometimes tempted to say that it's merely a glittering platitude that people have just fallen into the way when lacking the subject to tell of the sway of the properly scholarly attitude. The easily preachable, spread eagle speechable, and practice unreachable. Properly scholarly attitude. Thank you. The contract says we like the conversation to be bilingual by Ada Luma. When you come, bring your brown nest so he can be sure to please the funders. Will you check this box for a pine or grant? Do you have any poems that speak to troubled teens? Bilingual is best. Would you like to come to dinner with the patrons and sit by them? Will you tell us the stories that make us uncomfortable but not complicit? Don't read the one where you are just like us. Born to a greenhouse garden. Don't tell us how you picked tomatoes and ate them in the dirt. Watching vultures pick apart another birds and bones in the road. Tell us the one about your father suing hubcaps after a colleague said that's what his kind did. Tell us how he came to the meeting wearing a poncho and tried to sell the man his hubcaps back. Don't mention your father was a teacher, spoke English, loved making beer. Tell us.
again about the poncho, the hubcaps, how he did the thing he was trying to prove he didn't do. I felt a funeral in my brain by Emily Dickinson. I felt a funeral in my brain. A mourn was to and fro, kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, I saw this like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And when I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul, with the same boots of lead again, then space began to toll. As all the heavens wore bell and being but an eor, and I in silence, some strange race work solitary here. And then a clank and reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a ward at every plunge, and finished knowing then. Truth is, I would like to escape myself by Noor Al Growie. Truth is, I would like to escape myself, detach my body from my skin, peel it layer by layer to uncover beneath the surface of petals and thorns piled up year after year, who I am and who I want to be. I want to be the flower that grows in dirt, the feather that flies free between the cracks of fences. A wise woman once told me, don't worry about you, worry about who you could be. I want to be the woman that sits on a desk and writes pieces of oceans. Rivers on a white space in a place where imagination has no border. Thank you. My poem is Author's Prayer by Ilya Kaminsky. If I speak for the dead, I must leave this animal of my body. I must write the same poem over and over, for an empty page is the white flag of their surrender. If I speak for them, I must walk on the edge of myself. I must live as a blind man who runs through rooms without touching the furniture. Yes, I live. I can cross the streets asking, what year is it? I can dance in my sleep and laugh in front of the mirror. Even sleep is a prayer, Lord. I will praise your madness in a language not mine. Speak of music that wakes us. Music in which we move. For whatever I say is a kind of petition, and the darkest days must I praise. Fantastic job to all the participants. Truly, it, again, it was a joy to be able to watch these again. Um, and so now that our Sutter County uh, submissions are through, we are going to announce some winners. So uh, again, to refresh memory, third place will receive $50, second place will receive $75, and first place will receive $150. And the Sutter County champion, the first place winner, will move on and be our um, entry for Sutter County at the California State Finals for Poetry Out Loud. So let's announce some winners. I know you're all waiting for this. In third place, we have Abigail Friend. Congratulations. In second place, we have Sukmin Kur. And in first place, we have Roxanne Wright. Roxanne actually was our first place winner last year as well. So she will be moving on and competing for Sutter County once again, second year in a row. We are so happy to be working with her again. Uh, so those are our top three for both counties. I hope all the students who participated had a wonderful time. Um, and I want to take a second to thank all of the educators who helped us with this. You all were truly the reason that so many students participated this year. And I truly appreciate uh, the relationship that we have with all of you and all the work you do to engage your students in, in different and new ways. Um, a big thank you as well to all of the schools who had students enter and to our judges, uh, James Oskner of the Yuba County Library, uh, Priya Gill, uh, who is a literature student, and Angela James, who is a poet. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'll see you all next year.